whatever, then we would uh, kind of replenish our stock that we had back here in in, uh, in the kitchen, and and uh, so that we can help provide. I was talking to uh, someone over at the Sorrowful Mother, and there's still um, quite a few that they've been serving. Uh, one week they told me that there was 140 families came through, so um, there's still a lot of people going through there, and so. Um, there was a real nice thing on Facebook, you know, talking about the blessing boxes in the area. And uh, Nyman was, you know, listed on there as well. So it was kind of cool to see see somebody share that. So um, so please keep that in mind. Also, uh, if you look at the back of the bulletin charge conference for the uh, um, us is uh, November 6th. Um, that 5 to 7 is our time, not their time. And uh, so we converted that. That'll be at First United Methodist Church of Logansport. And there was three to choose from. And, you know, I had two of those. I'm busy doing something. So I wasn't able to go. One of those going to Indy for class. So that's the only one we really had um, to go to. So we do need uh, people who can go. They can ride with us or do whatever, we'll kind of carpool or do whatever we got to do so if somebody wants to go and be a part of that. Let's see, also we want to thank everyone for the those who worked and those who came and were part of the bean dinner. I think it was a um, huge success. I mean, we had a steady flow throughout the day, a uh, beautiful day, a lot of compliments on everything. And uh, um, I just wanted to say that I met a a man, his name is Vernon, he uh, lives in uh, Leroy, and uh, I think he didn't think I knew who where Leroy was. I said, I, I know exactly where it is, and uh, he said he can't, comes out here every Friday for the fish dinner at the Nyman um, bar there, and he saw it on the sign, and he thought, well, I'm going to go out there and have some beans, and he came out, a real nice guy, and uh, had a nice conversation with him, so glad to offer that to everyone. So we just want to say thank you to everyone that came and participated. And uh, the beans, as awesome, were, you know, were awesome. It was very good. So thank you to David and all those that helped out with the beans. Also, keep in mind the Trump Retreat is coming up October 30th. That is Sunday after church. And that will be here in the parking lot or back there in the back. You can figure out your games if you want to do games. And so we're going to offer that. And we've been telling the kids that we've been uh, to come to youth group, and we've been telling them to tell their friends. And um, I know Ann shared it with a few people at the uh, Sand Hill Prank Festival. So um, you know, we're trying to get the word out. We'll put it on the sign. and So that will be on the 30th, and that will be from 12 to 2. So we do have some birthdays coming up this week. Um, Shirley Forbes has a birth today, let's say. Shirley Paige Strasper has a birthday today, and also Scott Seisma. And on Tuesday, Matt Stahlbaum has a birthday, so we'll sing happy birthday to all of them. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear friends. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, everybody. Happy birthday, Paige. I see you. I know. I <laughs> So, um, let's see, I think that's all that I see on there. And I just wanted to say, oh, Mary, go ahead. Mary? No, say it. I, I was just going to comment on my attire. <laughs> Not my tire, my attire. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, and I apologize, I didn't get a chance to talk to you before church. Right. For the month of October, um, the mission moments... Uh, our crisis center and mobility worldwide. Um, since the COVID, we have not been collecting items for uh, the crisis center. So if you would like to make a monetary donation, um, just mark it and, and put it in an offering plate for the month of October. And, and missions, I hope you all know that missions gives monthly to each mission that we have for that month. Yeah. We donate a generous, we feel it's generous yeah. each month. Um, mobility Worldwide um, is, and most of you I think are, are aware of the, the carts that are made over here in Wheatfield 
um, for, and they're sent to Africa for the people there um, who aren't able to walk, they're crawling on the ground and things like this. It gets them up so that they can have human dignity and the eye-to-eye -eye people. Um, great place to go visit and see how they put them together. Um, due to the cost of the, the tires, um, it used to be $300 that we gave each year. Um, it has gone up to $350. So missions will be giving mobility worldwide um, $300 this month. But if you would like to make an offering to that, that would be great too. Mm -hmm. so. All right, now I'm going to just kind of highlight that only because of those that are watching online. Right. And so the mission mo um, focus for this month is the crisis center and also the mobility worldwide. And uh, um, so missions does give to both of those. But in any of these, if you want to make a contribution, you can put it in an envelope and mark it for that and put it in the offering plate and it'll go for that. And part of the cost that we found out that it, for years it's been 300 for one cart and uh, now it's up to 350, various, everybody knows everything goes up. So the cost of one cart is 350 and we've always tried to take in enough to, to purchase one cart. And uh, so we, it's been a very generous church, you know, to give to that. And so that is going to be part of our um, mission uh, focus for this month. So if you'd like to give to that, and uh, we'll kind of uh, um, uh, kind of make an announcement at the end, on, you know, afterwards on, you know, that we reached our goal to, to give one cart, and we'll go from there. It is a great cause, and, and I know that they're very generous in their time. If somebody ever wanted to, to tour the facility and see how they put them together, um, how it's all made, painted, and put together and packaged and all that and how it goes. And uh, we uh, have every um, quarter, we get a, a newsletter from them and we have them in the narthex and, and also at the front door. And you can look at that and you can see that it's really a pretty powerful uh, thing to watch when you see the worship service that's involved. They do a worship service and then um, the people are there and they're, you know, uh, worshiping together and they have church and, and to see how the pastors run their churches and, and the facilities that they have at. And then they do this big ceremony and then they present the carts to those who receive them. And like Mary said, you know, gives them back their dignity. And I think the thing that's always stuck in my mind is when you see them, many of them are handicapped in a way that they um, can't stand up or be vertical ever. And uh, just to be upright on that cart and see people um, eye to eye again is just a very moving part of that um, service and, and that reception. So, um, so we're very happy to be a part of that. And so, on behalf of the missions committee, if any, anyone wants to give to that, we certainly um, pass that on to Mobility and uh, that, that ministry that they have. And that's right here, being done right here in your own community. And so what a great day uh, to be a part of. So thank you, Mary. Um, I think that's it. So we'll have a word of prayer and then we'll go to the call to worship. Father God, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for the blessing of this church and the people of this church. But most of all, we thank you for that ministry of this church, meaning that opportunity that each one of us take to go out into this community and share the gospel of Jesus Christ, the message of love, peace, joy, and uh, the grace and mercy of Jesus. And so, Father, we thank you for this time together. But now we ask that we take this moment, this time, out of our lives, out of our busy lives, to just focus on the Word of God, focus on the message of Jesus Christ, focus on rekindling that flame that once burned so brightly within our hearts and our souls. So, Father, we thank you for this day. May the Holy Spirit enlighten us, open up our minds and our hearts to receive the glory of our God as we come together in one, um, one body, one ministry together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's all join together in the call to worship. We gather as God's people, bringing our fears and pain, knowing that when our spirits have grown cold, 
God rekindles the gift of faith in us. We gather as God's people, hanging our broken hearts on the branches of the tree of life, knowing that while friends may turn against us, God transforms enemies into sisters and brothers. We gather as God's people, hungering and healing and hope, for hungering for healing and hope, knowing that even when life is no picnic, God, God prepares a feast for us. Our opening hymn is 145, Morning Has Broken. <coughs> And I said, yeah, I do. And he said, always wear your harness. 
And he proceeded to tell me that he went to work that day. He was planning on going home and he was going to go hunting, stop off and hunt until dark. And he got there and he put all his stuff on and he realized that he didn't have his harness. And he said, oh, I'll be okay just this time. And the next thing you know, that evening climbing up in the sand, he ended up falling out of the sand and he's in a wheelchair the rest of his life. And he said he has made it his mission to teach those, if I ever see anybody in camo or going to places and talking to people, to tell them just one time is not okay. I had a friend of mine that also went hunting was a friend of his. They went out in the stand and they said, I'll see you later. And they parted and they went to their stand. My friend got into his stand and he heard a noise. Wasn't quite sure what it was, but he heard a noise. Ah, it'll be all right. So he climbed up in the stand. After a while, he said, I got to find out. I'll just go the long way. So he got down on the stand, did a big circle to go by his friend's stand. And he noticed that the stand was turned sideways. When he went up to the stand, the guy had fallen out of the tree, crushed both ankles, broke his leg, and, uh, um, and over time he, he healed. But it, telling this just one time is not okay. So I think that in my mind that, that the reason that I do this is because whether you hunt or not, you know somebody that does. And so what we do today, we set off the top, set off, set a time aside to pray for the safety of the men, the women, and the children as they go out into the trees and the, 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 this community. I think our, the, the men and women and children of the, the hunting community do very well at being safe with a weapon and sometimes don't realize the dangers that lie in the, in the little things as well. And so that's why um, I, you know, do this uh, Camel Sunday. Let's have a word of prayer. Father God, we pray for the safety of all those who go are going out into the, this creation that you have given us. The beauty of the trees and life and the animals and all this is just awe-inspiring for me. But Father, sometimes in that awe-inspiring moment, we can forget the little things. So today we want to lift up the men and women and the children that are going out into the, the woods and we pray that just for that moment that they may not say the words about it'll be okay because sometimes tragedy <coughs> happens. And so Father we pray for the wisdom of what we know is right. We pray for the guidance of what we know is right. And just one time is not good, is not right. We all try in one way or another to get away with something. But sometimes that something causes tragedy. So Father, let us continue to always be an example for others. By doing what is right, by doing what is safe, by taking care of each other. So Father, today we want to continue to lift up those who are going out into this, this beauty this environment that you have given us and let us do what is right and pass that example on to our children, our grandchildren, and our great-grandchildren. In all these things, Father, let us give you the glory of all the things that we have in Jesus Christ, our, our Lord. Amen. Great. As we now come into our uh, regular time of prayer, do you have any joys or concerns to share with each other? Kathy? My brother-in-law, George, my brother, William, and friend, Michael. George, William, and Michael? Are you on? Right? Now the Red Hawks and family uh, unity. Thank you. Trisha? Lori, Shelly, and Bobby. Lori, Shelly, and Bobby. Jackson? Um, Little who? Little grandma. All right, little grandma. I, I knew who you were talking about, but I didn't make it out this time. It's been little G, little grandma, little... That time I missed it. So prayers for her as well. Anyone else? Debbie, Debbie, Donna, and Duke. Yeah, Debbie, Donna, and Duke. My uh, sister's friend Donna is in Texas right now. Her brother... Has been in hospice and they're not expecting him to make it through the evening. So, 
prayers for Donna and uh, her brother family. So, and in saying that, prayers for Sarah and the family, um, and her uh, dad. Keep Sarah's dad in your prayers. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Sarah's dad is in. You know, entered into hospice. And, so please keep him in your prayers. And Sarah. Anyone else? Our family altar. Pray for our nation, elected officials, law enforcement, first responders, our forces, health care workers, caregivers, all those affected by illness, safe travels for those on the road, all churches, the people of Ukraine, all those affected by violence, flooding, and all natural disasters. Our continued prayers for our teachers, administration, support staff, students, all God's children. Uh, continued prayers for those, the people of uh, uh, Florida, also up the um, East Coast, and all those who were affected by the storms. We know there's a lot of devastation down there. Um, so there, I know of some families that are headed that way to check their um, places down there. So we continue to pray for safe travels for them as well. But uh, um, and we pray for our um, first responders. And I know there's a lot of first responders and, and people from up here that are headed down there to help to restore power and uh, to construction and whatever it may be. So we want to continue. We want to pray for those who are traveling down there and their safety and the work that they're going to be doing. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just come together as the body of Christ. And first of all, Father, we thank you and praise you for being in here with us today. Today is the day that we come together in Holy Communion. The body and blood of Jesus Christ is what we celebrate today. The very presence of God that is what we celebrate here today. And so, Father, we thank you this day for, for our God. We thank you for our Savior in Jesus Christ. We thank you for sending your Son into the world to show us grace and mercy. We thank you for the, the, the true nature and the true fact that Jesus who took his, his bread and dipped it in the cup with the same hand of the one who would betray him. What a message it is for us to see the love that Jesus had for the one who would betray him. So Father, let us take this message, this same glory for God that we have, and let us too dip our hand in the cup with those who we feel have betrayed us. So Father, today we have lifted up the names of those um, who are upon our hearts. And we pray for them, and we pray for the issues, and we pray for the people that they have lifted up in prayer for us this morning. And so they no longer pray alone, but we all pray together. This family of God that you have brought together now comes together and lifts up in prayer the concerns that we have for our brothers and sisters here in this church. So, Father, we thank you and praise you for this time together. We thank you and praise you for this opportunity to sit amongst our brothers and sisters and show our support um, for what they go through. We pray that you continue to be with those who are mentioned by name. We pray that in each of those cases that you reveal yourself so that they know that the presence of God is there with them at that very moment. So, Father, today in all of these things, Father, we find joy and we find peace and we find comfort in knowing that you are the God in which we serve. You are the one that is there with our family, friends, and loved ones. You are the one that is there when that time comes to, for them to come into your kingdom, that you will be the one to welcome them into that kingdom. So, Father, we are people who find joy in our sorrow, in our sorrowness, in our brokenness, in our hurt. So, Father, in you we give all of our glory as the people of God come together in remembering the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture lesson for today is, uh, comes from 2 Timothy. I learned that lesson. If you leave that hanging somewhere in the middle of all this, it's going to fall. So, and uh, in our scripture lesson for today, in, the, in the Second Timothy, there's a this is a letter that Paul wrote to uh, Timothy. And there's something that I want you to listen for, and maybe you you'll hear it very early in the first verse. And Paul's letter in the first first letter to Timothy was the introduction was kind of about the same thing, except for there's one uh, three words that was a little bit different in the second letter. And those three words in there was the promise of life. That's what Paul added to this. Promise of life. Other than that, the introduction was the, exactly the same for, uh, well, pretty much the same for the first letter. Now in here, I want you to kind of have this vision. Who is Timothy? Timothy is a young man. He's a timid man, a shy man. He's a, early in his ministry. He's a pastor. He's teaching and preaching and sharing the good news of the gospel. But yet, he's going through a difficult time. He's going through a struggle or in his early ministry. He's struggling with his ministry, the ministry itself. And so Paul's letter here is to encourage him and to, 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 to lead him and to, and to encourage him to, to grow in this, this time of trial. And so, but I want you to listen for that, that one difference in the beginning. The promise of life. Who did that promise of life come to us through? So this is 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God. All right, I'll just do this. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did, when I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. Recalling your tears, I, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure lives in you. For this reason I am reminded remind to remind I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of hands of my hands. For God did not give us the spirit of cowardice, but rather the spirit of power and of love and of self discipline. Do not be ashamed then of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. But join with me in suffering the gospel, relying on the power of God, who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. The grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. And for this reason I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know the one whom I have put my trust. And I am sure that he is able to guard until the day what I have entrusted to him. Hold to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me in the, in the faith and the love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you and praise you this day for the glory of our God. We thank you and praise you for the encouragement that we hear from Paul to that of Timothy. That same message of encouragement, that same message that we, when we go through struggles through our ministry, that we should hear these words for ourselves. That how Paul and how Christ are truly 
um, blessed and honored to, to be a part of their life and how Paul says, I remember your tears. In other words, the struggle that Timothy was going through in his early ministry. And so, Father, we just continue to pray for each one of us because it's not about me, the pastor of any church. It's about the ministry that we all belong to. And so we remember the ministry that we are part of. In that ministry, we remember that we need, sometimes need to rekindle the flame of that power of God that once burned so brightly within us. So, Father, today we hear this message. And we ask that, that that flame be rekindled and let us be forever uh, proud and not be embarrassed or ashamed to share the good news of Jesus Christ in this community. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The, uh, the message of this, um, uh, this series that we're going to go through, a four-part series, the message of this is to, to speak boldly and proudly and, and confidently about the message of Jesus Christ. And that's kind of what Paul is uh, referring to in Timothy, is that he needs to speak proudly. Timothy, and by personality, by uh, who he is, he's a young pastor, he's timid, kind of shy, and, and, and trying to learn his way through this. And Paul says, I remember the tears, in other words, the struggle that Timothy was going through. And he tell, goes on to tell him about the, the, the faith that, that he knows that lives within him. He said, I knew the faith of your grandmother Lois. I know the faith of your mother Eunice. And I know that same faith just drives you and is a part of your life. And so I know that you can do these things. And so he encourages in, in, in there. And, and the, one of the parts that I really enjoy about the, the beginning part is how Paul starts this letter is because he knows who Timothy is, he knows what he needs to hear, and in the beginning I see this, this introduction about who he says, he says, he's Paul, an apostle, this is who I am, but then he goes into, he's a, an apostle of, of Christ, and it's by the good will of God, the Father, and in other words, the power of God that is his work, and works within Paul, brings him to go out into the world and share this good news of Jesus Christ. And it's all these things that are coming to him, that, that, that this power, it's all of these things that make him and who he is. And so he takes this and he does all this and he explains that it, I do all of this for the sake of the promise of life. Now think of that for a moment. That's the joy, hope, and, and, and the, all of what we search for. We as Christians, that, that hope of the, the, the promise of life. And that's what Paul says in here. I do this for the sake of promise of life. And that same, the promise of life that comes to us through Christ Jesus. And in all these things. And he says, then he says, to kind of help, you know, to Timothy, to David, to Frank, to Jackie, my beloved child. Do you see how much it's somebody that you would truly admire, somebody that truly boosts your faith, Somebody who truly makes you feel a part of the ministry that we have here in the church professes to you that you are my beloved child. Timothy would have looked at that, that part right there and just began to kind of maybe have a wake-up moment from that struggle that he was going through. Maybe a reassuring moment that you were doing the right thing. When Paul said that, you know that Timothy thought, knew that he was doing this for the sake of the promise of life. He knew that he was doing it for Christ Jesus. He knew that Paul was doing all these things. And now he says that you are my beloved child. Encouraging moment that God is at work within you, guiding you, moving you, striving you to take steps that you never thought that you would take. Even in the midst of your struggle. Even in the midst of second-guessing whether you were in ministry at all. Paul comes in there and reassures Timothy that you're doing the right things. He's encouraging him with the good news. Someone that he admires is get, passing that good news. When I sit there and look at this passage, I think this is something that we all need to hear. Each one of us, no matter where we are in our ministry, I want to say this. 
The purpose of this series and what we're going to look at is rekindling the flame. So what is that flame for a moment? I remember as a child, I want you to kind of think about we did. We have the youth group here. We have the children here. We do all these things. We, I want you to kind of think about your childhood. Going to Sunday school, going to maybe a church camp, going to uh, vacation Bible school, going to Sunday school, whatever it may be. I want you to kind of think about it. And I was thinking about it. What, is, what was all that for me back as a child? What that was, was an opportunity to get together with friends. What that was, was an opportunity to meet new friends. And so that's what it was then. But it, it kindled a flame, it began a flame in us, because the sole purpose of what we um, kind of remember from our childhood is, and what we remember now is that of who is the one that made sure we went to a youth group? or a Sunday school class, or those things. Their purpose of introducing you to some, uh, to these things was so that you would get to know Christ. So you would, moan more, you would know more of who Christ is. But in there, as a child, we just want to meet more friends. We want to uh, meet new friends. But in there, the sole purpose of the person who led you there was so that you would be introduced to Christ. So when I sit there and think about my childhood, there was this flame that began, but it wasn't necessarily that flame for Jesus or to know him better. And so when I kind of sit there and think of that, that flame kind of grew, and then we grew in our faith, we grew in our uh, in adulthood to want to know more about this, this promise of life, this promise of eternal life. And so as we begin to grow that, there's this flame that begins to grow in our souls about to know who Jesus is. But sometimes, and I believe this, that whether you are a seasoned veteran in the pulpit, or whether you're a first-time comer to the church, that sometimes that flame is more like a pilot light on a stove. And when I sit there and think about a pilot light on a stove, it's, it's hidden under a piece of, of metal. The only thing that ignites off that pilot light is when you turn the gas on. And that gas comes from a different source. So what we need to kind of remember is that we have that pilot light. That pilot light exists in us. And we can ignite the flames of others. But sometimes our flame begins to diminish. And plus sometimes it just manages to be that pilot light. I would say this, for me, sometimes after reading all week long and studying and sitting down and writing my sermon, that at some, most times on a Sunday morning, my, my, my flame is that of like the old high school bonfires that you would have on a, a homecoming Sunday. Now, some, all our young kids, they don't know nothing about that because the schools would never, oh no, build a fire, I don't think so. But there, back in the day, I remember a couple of them that I went to. You'd pile all, anything and everything that would burn out there. Pallets, trees, whatever it would be. You would have this huge bonfire going out there in the high school. And I said, that was kind of, sometimes on a Sunday morning, most times on a Sunday morning, after I've been in the Word of God, I, and I'm ready to come up here and preach to you guys, that's, how, that's kind of how that flame is for me. That, that flame is like that huge bonfire at the homecoming day. Don't worry, I didn't go dancing. So one of those things, that's how it is. But there's also, it doesn't matter whether you're first time here or seasoned, pulpit, seasoned person in, in the pulpit. Sometimes that flame is nothing more than a pilot light. It all just kind of think, seems to go there. So this series that we're going to kind of look at is about, all about kindling, rekindling that flame. And taking that flame and realizing that flame, what that is, is a gift from God. That gift that came from God is that of the Holy Spirit. And that the Holy Spirit that lives within you, that gift that was given to you, is that of the flame that needs to be kindled. I want to tell you a little story. I was given a, a gift by someone. And it, 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 it was a little baggy, about this big, and it contained two peppers, about that big. I was uh, given that gift, and I was going to look at him, and he says, Here, you like hot things, you like spicy things. So I want you to take this and I want you to have them. And I looked at that and I said, what is it? Well, actually I was looking for the warning label on it and there wasn't one. But in all fairness to the person that gave it to me, 
said, be careful. They're hot. And so I looked at that and said, what kind of is that? I believe they were scorpion peppers. That doesn't that strike fear in you just hearing <laughs> what kind of pepper it is? Wouldn't that kind of deter you from wanting to try it? Well, I'm going to tell you what kind of person I am. So anyway, I got a warning with this and said, be careful with it. And it even came with the words, just so you know, on the Scoville chart, it ranks at about a million. Well, I want to tell you, if you look at a Scoville chart, on a Scoville chart, the only scorpion that's on there is the Trinidad scorpion. And just for information, a Trinidad scorpion, if that's what this was, ranks at a million two to 2.2 million. Just so you know, that's pretty hot. And just to kind of get things down to where Dave really is in the ranking of hot, I kind of classify myself as a jalapeno, somewhere between jalapeno and habanero. If you look at the chart, they are nowhere near a scorpion. So I kind of looked at that and I had that sitting there and for a couple of weeks I heard, did you try it yet? Did you try it yet? Nope. Nope. I was kind of building up the courage. And so I took and Ann made some taco soup, really good taco soup, but it wasn't enough. And I thought, hey, this would be a good thing to try that. So Thursday was the day the Lord hath made. And I thought for sure I was going to meet him at the end of this day. <laughs> so I took, with the warning of the person that gave that to me, I took it and I cut off a piece of that pepper. And I laid it down on the thing and I started dicing it up into small pieces. And so I thought, well, this will be perfect. So I took a spoonful of taco soup. And I took one little piece of that and put it in the middle and it stirred it up a little bit and took a bite. Never see the raging fires of California and how they just kind of start in one place and they start just spreading. Well, for a moment I sat there and thought, this isn't too bad. Then all of a sudden it just started moving. But it was okay because all I did was just go over there, stomp on the fire, and it was up. It wasn't that bad, but this is pretty good. I usually have to put a whole jar of jalapenos in a bowl and a pot of chili to get that kind of heat. So I thought, let's try some more. So I took a bowl of this taco soup and I took a few more peppers and I put them in there and stirred it all up and started eating. Well, the fire started picking up again a little bit and started raging across the grass. I was able to handle it. It wasn't too bad. Remember, I'm a jalapeno, somewhere between jalapeno and uh, habanero kind of guy. And just so you know, jalapenos on the chart, Scoville, are only 2,500 to 8,000. That's a long way to scorpion. Although habanero <coughs> is somewhere between 100,000 and 350,000. That's quite a jump. That's quite a difference. So I ended up taking and I thought, you know, this is not too bad. This is not bad at all. I, I, I kind of like my bowl of soup. But yet, have you ever had, you know, that little guy sitting on the shoulder here? I'm going to call him the good sense that God gave you. And he was sitting on this shoulder and said, that was a good bowl of soup. Just let it alone. But then you got the devil over here that just said, you sissy. You don't know how high that is. And so, this one won. I ended up cutting off a piece of that pepper and I thought, you know what? I just got to know. And I popped that in my mouth. And this guy said, idiot. <laughs> I am telling you right now, on a scorpion pepper, you can rekindle the flame of Lowell, Demont, and Wheatfield <laughs> off that little piece that I had. That was the hot pepper. And I don't feel guilty or ashamed about the fact that I took that bag and I gave it to a friend of mine. <laughs> You're going to love these. In that message that we just heard from Paul, Paul gave a very powerful letter to Timothy. Timothy was struggling in his ministry. Timothy was struggling in his faith. And Paul came up in that letter and he told him, I do not feel ashamed 
I do not feel ashamed of preaching the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. I was put into the world to take and to, to endure. Then we have to realize the pain and the struggle and the torment and the things that Paul went through in his faith. And he says, I am not ashamed to profess the name of the Lord. I am not afraid to go through these struggles. And he's telling Timothy that you cannot be afraid to go through the things that you're going through right now. Because I remember the tears that you shed. I remember the struggles that you went through. But I also know of the joy that you will receive in this ministry that you have chosen and chosen to. So I think in Paul's message, the message that we have in, in our thinking that sometimes, sometimes the devil is on his shoulder kind of trying to lead us to go in one direction. And I think sometimes we even succumb to that calling and we make that step to do what's not right. But what we always have to know is that we always have the good sense that God has given us to not be ashamed and come back and to receive the message of Jesus Christ. I think what we truly need to do in our lives to go from that 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 pilot like this that is just burning constantly. In other words, the message of Jesus Christ that burns constantly is that we need to take that and we need to succumb and not feel ashamed or not to feel any guilt or anything in bringing the message of Jesus Christ to this world and this community. If our flame is to ever grow, if our flame is to ever produce anything at all, we need to go out into the community and allow people to come into this church, into this place of worship, and be introduced to the living God. And that living God is found in you. You may not be drawn to the pulpit, but you are the ministry of this church. You are the message of Jesus Christ. You are the good news of grace and mercy. You are all of these things of the, that amount to this church as in Christ Jesus. It's not me. It's you. You are the ministry of this church. And sometimes our flame just doesn't glow as brightly as it did. And sometimes we need something to do that. And whatever that may be, only you and God know. But I'm here to say the same thing that Paul said to Timothy. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. Because it isn't you. It's that flame. It's the Holy Spirit. It's the very power of God that has been given to you that does these things here in this church, here in this community, and in the world. We have been called into ministry together. And we will walk into the world professing the name of the Lord. He came in love. Jesus came in love for the sake of the promise of life. That promise of life is good news to people. Many people come into the church broken and hurting. People who have been in the church for years are broken and hurting. But still that flame continues to burn. But it needs to be rekindled. The joy that was found in the very beginning needs to be rekindled. And that joy comes in sharing the good news of Christ Jesus. That's the message of Jesus. That's the message of Christ. I think the last thing that I want to leave you before we do communion is this. The flame that you have received that needs rekindled is a gift given to you by God. Not by the church, but it was given to you by God. How do you receive that gift? What does that, that gift mean to you? And not being afraid or ashamed to go out in the community and share that with others. That's the message that Paul is giving Timothy. 
He's encouraging him that God is at work within you. It's not something you do. It's what God does through you. It was given to you out of the grace and mercy that came through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. On the night of Jesus' arrest, he took the bread and he broke it and he said, this is my body which is broken for you every time you eat of this bread. Do this and remember it to me until the day of the Lord's coming again. After the meal, he took the cup and he said, this is the cup of the new covenant. This is my blood which is shed for you, which is shed for many. Every time you drink of this cup, do this and remember it to me till the day of the Lord's coming again. Let us pray. Father God, we come before you knowing that this is the bread and juice of life. We know that it is through the power of God that this bread and this juice can become the body and blood of Jesus Christ. So today we pray that your Holy Spirit, the very power of God gifted to us, will be poured out upon this bread and this juice so that for us this morning, it can become the body and blood of Jesus Christ. So Father, today your people have gathered here in the house of the Lord. They have gathered in the place that you have given us. But we don't keep it here in this place. We take that same power into this community and we profess the name of the God who is at work within us. So Father, as your spirit has been poured out upon us, that same spirit has been poured out upon this bread and juice. So today we gather together in the place of the Lord, in this table that he has prepared, knowing that we too, as Christ did that day in the upper room, that we too one day will be placing our hand in the cup of our enemy or those who will betray us. But in that, we see the example of Christ and what he did for us. So Father, today, your table has been opened to all who come to know the name of Jesus. So that is what we are an example of here this morning. We pray that all who want to come in the name of the Lord shall receive this gift. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. David, would you please help me? anybody would rather have these, David's going to break off a piece of bread and place it, you give it in your hand and then you place it in a cup where we have these if you'd rather have those. God came into the world through his son in Jesus Christ and he opened the table for you and for all. He has invited us all to come and know him and to learn and have our flame rekindled. May you know that today, for us this morning, we are participating in Holy Communion. The very body that was broken and the blood that was shed was shed for you. Come, he has invited you to the table and his table is ready.
cakes and other stuff in the fridge so um, there's something you don't see just ask so let's go out into the world and profess that flame that has been rekindled maybe ignited maybe for a while you haven't even felt that you've had a flame and so I just pray over this next uh, three weeks three more weeks of our series here that we can kind of learn and, and grow to, to share that message let us go out in the world and profess boldly and proudly the message of Jesus Christ and not be ashamed for our faith. Amen. Amen. Jackson, come here. You and Lily, come here. Get your thing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 